Okay. Okay, great. Um, we are back for the second day of the General Assembly, waiting a few seconds in order to have uh, the different attendee coming in. Uh, I hope you have a, a good evening uh, without uh, being able to share a, a glass of wine or a beer or, or to discuss with the people. I know it's not usual in the General Assembly, but uh, at least you are back. Uh, so it's uh, my pleasure to welcome you on this uh, General Assembly. Uh, we have uh, uh, a schedule today which is uh, uh, interesting, but I should first uh, share my screen and uh, show you uh, what is going to happen today. Uh, so we have this uh, first plenary session with uh, two uh, series of presentation, the Agile Development Initiative and uh, a welcome to the new Incoma Initiative that will be done by Emmanuel Pajou uh, that will join later on. Then we will have a live poster and demo session. Um, just to remind that uh, the, to, to the, the uh, um, presenter in the live poster that they have to admit uh, their uh, their attendees and uh, they are uh, operating as administrator of their own session. Uh, so I hope it will uh, run uh, smoothly for all of you. Uh, then we will have a second plenary session with a, uh, an update on upscaling and sustainability uh, that will be uh, managed by Lefteris uh, Mamai and the plenary session uh, before uh, between uh, 12 30 and 13 uh, talking about ethics in eShape and how we are going to secure it and then we will have a lunch break uh, that will uh, lead us to 2 p.m with uh, then a um, second day with two break uh, a second part with two breakout session uh, a, a strong communication aspect in room one uh, you can be uh, eShape uh, ambassador and we hope to have uh, um, pilots uh, representative, uh, at least one by pilots uh, in this session in order to really uh, focus on this, uh, on this uh, aspect of communication and it will be managed by uh, Eleni uh, Christer and, uh, and Mirka Rossi, uh, our um, NOAA team uh, dedicated to uh, communication. And also um, uh, a demo about a tool that uh, can uh, allow you to access uh, the compliance of, to assess the compliance of your personal data processing that will be uh, carried out on room two. Uh, it's also about ethics, and I, I recommend also that uh, someone, some of the, of the, uh, at least one by pilot, if uh, two people are available, to go there and to have a look to to this, which is key also in our in our work. And we will have a, a, a short feedback on that, and uh, you will have the, uh, the opportunity to, to go to chat rooms and to discuss again uh, uh, after that. So that's our program for today. Uh, I hope that we, you will enjoy uh, uh, the rest of the, of the day with uh, interesting input from all the elements coming out from, uh, from eShape and from all the, uh, uh, the partners. And uh, that's time to start our first session of the day uh, with uh, a first uh, presentation coming from Marie-Françoise Ouadro on uh, Agile Development in G-Shape. And then we will have the, the newcomers in G-Shape with uh, Emmanuel. So uh, Marie-Françoise, the floor is yours. I stop sharing my screen and it's time to, to go on. Thank you and have a nice day. Good morning, my name is Marie-Françoise Wadreau. I work with the Open Geospatial Consortium and uh, I am um, involved in eShape as a lead for the Work Package 3 implementation. I will introduce to you today 
the joint development methodology we have defined for, to coordinate the E-shape um, developments. So as I mentioned before, we have uh, 55 partners in the consortium, seven showcases, 27 pilots, soon 32, and we have a four-year grant. This is a lot of activities and a lot of partners to coordinate. The challenge was to define a methodology simple enough to be adopted by all the partners, defining a framework to align pilots with E-shaped KPIs, flexible enough to allow the pilot to reach their own agenda with the users. As you know, uh, all the pilots have to have uh, ITRL, so, and, and they need to have real users in front, so they need to meet their commitments. Identifying the support expected by the pilots and when to bring a timely support, allowing to monitor uh, regularly the progress, allowing to capture the lessons learned regularly from all the pilots, and allowing to report and build a final e-shape development guide. Only that. So, where are we right now? So, the work package three um, works began with an initial assessment from uh, all of the pilots. And uh, then we had uh, a sprint one. Now we are assessing the sprint one. Then there would be a sprint two and an assessment of sprint two. And then during all the project, we capture all the lessons learned into the E-shape development guide. Right now we are here. So sprint one is finishing for the pilot and uh, I am working on the sprint one assessment. Of course, uh, the lessons learned capture has begun, and this is what I will present, how we coordinate all that. From the initial assessment, we had some uh, major findings. First, uh, that the pilots wanted to know more about uh, the platforms, uh, standards, best practices, access to the data, and so we have identified a certain number of issues that the pilots, uh, th that were of interest for the pilots, and where they wanted to have some support from eShape. Because we have 55 partners, we consider they are representative of the Earth Observation community in Europe. And so the issues which are of interest for the pilots are of interest for the whole community. So you cannot read that, but um, what we have done is that uh, we, we had some KPIs for the project and we have defined um, challenges that met the KPIs. And we have asked the pilot to select uh, three of the challenges here, of these 13 challenges. One was f uh, compulsory during the sprint one, one of these challenges, which are the one related to the work package three implementation. And in the next uh, sprint, they will have to select at least one uh, challenge from uh, the category um, here, corresponding to the uptake uh, or the sustainability. And, uh, and then the two other challenges are free, but they have to select at least three challenges. Some pilots have select up to five uh, challenges. And this was to make sure that the work and the reporting was aligned with the KPIs of the project. So some of the challenges, for instance, are uh, increase the preparedness uh, index uh, for integration into as a, as a service AAAS infrastructure or um, demonstrating improvement in exploiting the wealth of data made available through the uh, GEOS platform, NextGEOS, EOS, in situ, observatories, etc. So at the beginning of the sprint, these are the challenges that had been selected. So increase the number of uh, user-oriented uh, services. These are the three first other challenges related to the co-design. And with no surprise, they were very selected because this comes early into the um, project. And um, also because uh, uh, this is something which is very innovating in eShape. Then they had to select the work, they had to select in a compulsory way uh, one of these uh, four challenges, which are the one related to um, work package three. And the one which has been uh, the most selected was demonstrated improvement in exploiting the wealth of data made available in Europe. And so they have selected some of the other work packages challenges. Then we have also asked them to select some milestones for these challenges. And they had to select one or two milestones so, so that we could in, uh, follow and monitor the progress. And this is the different milestones over a timeline. So we have gathered them per month 
And in fact, in fact, um, we this has allowed us to go from pilot milestone to E-shape monthly milestone because, for instance, here in April we had all these milestones to be reached. In May, all this one. In June, all these ones. For each pilot uh, milestone, uh, we could review the support which is expected by the pilots and the return of experience expected from the pilots to prioritize the expectation expressed into the initial assessment. So, in fact, all this methodology has, to, uh, has a goal, which is to identify which is the best time to bring a timely support to the pilots, but also to monitor the progress to make sure that all the pilots were progressing regularly over the four years of project, and then to capture the knowledge because uh, we need to discuss with them when they are making the work to identify which are the lessons learned of interest for the whole community. So, after the initial assessment, we had this assessment bringing all, already a lot of information, the issues and expectations where the pilots wanted some, some support, we had asked them to select some challenges, and these challenges were related to milestones. What um, uh, we have done then is that uh, Work Package 1, Armin, Deimos, and, and OGC have uh, defined a workflow and have created a showcase support service record for each challenge to support monitoring and regular dialogue between the actors. This SSS uh, service is based on, on JIRA, but JIRA licenses are, are quite expensive. So this is a way to um, uh, have many, many users and uh, not to pay too many uh, JIRA licenses. And, um, and we have uh, 98 uh, challenges uh, which are defined. So you see more than three per pilot. Then I have uh, shown yesterday this uh, graph where I have captured all the um, uh, requests of support that had been made by the, by the pilots into a logical workflow just to structure all this uh, information because we had an amazing amount of information out of the initial assessment and a lot of uh, issues that were of interest and we had to organize them a little bit into a logical way. So here the user comes, he gets to the pilot, he can go through a Jupyter notebook or a user interface to discover access the data. And uh, this is the pilot running on the platform. These are the questions about the platforms. And this is about the publication of uh, data, how to uh, publish uh, the, outsource, the output uh, results. So this is, for instance, the detail that had, of questions that had been uh, asked about the platforms um, to make a comparative analysis of the platforms and cloud services, the offerings, including uh, provided tool services, authentication, processing policies, etc. So, out of the issues, we have organized them into a conceptual workflow and we have gathered the milestones into monthly uh, milestones for eShape through all the pilots. What we have done is that for each challenge, we have identified where was the focus of work in this uh, theoretical workflow? So, um, uh, for instance, here uh, we had some pilots that were uh, thinking to select an, um, a platform or to implement on the platform, and here they will bring some return on experience on that. Here we had some pilots uh, providing or creating new data and they can uh, document the data assets um, uh, of uh, the data they are using or they are producing. And here, they are working on data preparation, so they can help in um, on this uh, very important topic, which is data preparation, and on which I think there is a lot to do in the future, also in the community. So, this uh, workflow has been uh, reorganized into a linear um, template uh, that will become uh, the, the structure, the, uh, the content, of uh, the best practices, uh, the e-shape e guide we have to write at the end of the project, and we begin to capture the lessons learned into each of the chapters. Typically, uh, the Earth Observation Resources catalog we are working on will feed this uh, chapter on ICT resources uh, specification and on platform selection. They will be here. So, we had the initial assessment, the issues and expectations from the issue pilots, the conceptual workflow. We have mapped the challenges on this conceptual workflow, and we have defined how to capture and share the knowledge. 
And here we had some milestones uh, of the E-shape uh, pilots that we have gathered into E-shape uh, milestones. And this is when we have to check if the uh, pilot has progressed as a plan and when we have to discuss with him which are the lessons learned to bring into the final uh, document. So just to give an example about uh, the content of this document, I will just um, uh, give some uh, inputs, um, some information about what is right now on works into the exploitation uh, um, chapter. Why? Because the exploitation is the goal that we all have to, we are all targeting uh, out of the pilots. Uh, we want the pilots to mature the TRL and to reach exploitation. And uh, I want to show that uh, uh, because this is the growl of, of the projects for the, for the pilots, um, this is maybe where uh, we have to improve the maturity and to, to make people discover what is waiting them here. So we have one pilot uh, that uh, will provide very interesting inputs on describing the fit for use and the limits of operational product. When you have a, you make a product, an output or a service, it is important to make it use into operations uh, by uh, businesses or by security uh, departments and so on to describe the fit for use and the limits of uh, operational uh, use. Uh, for instance, here it's a product about uh, landslides and uh, it is more adapted to slow um, slow landslides than to rapid landslides and so this is uh, what has to be described here to avoid uh, misuse. Uh, here we have a pilot that works on uh, disasters also and um, uh, they are working quite naturally. You can make that in an intuitive way but uh, it, it has in this case it has, to, it has to be more intuitive. It has to be a real um, focus and, and process when you want your system to work uh, edge uh, 24 and uh, seven uh, days uh, on, uh, on seven, uh, you need to make an analysis of single point of failure. What is this analysis? Is that you take each of the component, each piece of software that participates into uh, your um, process, and you have to analyze uh, what happens if it fails. Do you have some type of backup? Do you have a router on a shelf? Do you have a model that can, you can use as a backup uh, entry, uh, what if uh, you miss uh, some input data? This is exactly what you have to analyze here because uh, when you serve disasters, uh, of course you need uh, your product to be uh, available uh, when you need it. Then uh, managing input data changes, the satellites have a life uh, duration uh, between seven to 10 years. And uh, here we have a pilot that had to work uh, very intensively at the beginning of the project on uh, preparing the follow-up of uh, Probavi satellite. Uh, to do so, you need some um, uh, data to prepare your, your change. Uh, usually when you change satellite, you don't have exactly the same sensors. You have sensors that can provide the same type of output, but, but of course the sensors improve. And, uh, and so you have to adapt your application. And this can be very challenging and the more your product is used and the more it is challenges be challenging because you have to prepare your down, uh, downstream users to this change too. And then reproducibility will be one chapter. At the moment, I don't uh, have identified any pilot uh, contributing to that, but I will because this is an important chapter that we have to uh, uh, develop here. So we have a methodology that helps us now to bring timely support, to monitor the progress, to capture the knowledge. So uh, what we have done so far, for instance, to support the pilots, we have worked on this uh, Earth Observation Resources Catalog. We have defined, uh, we are working on defining a framework to assess the platforms very rapidly. We are analyzing the DIAS offerings. Of course, this has been uh, to be reviewed regularly because everything evolves. Uh, this is one of the, of the nice uh, thing in this community is that nothing is stable, everything improves at all times. And, uh, and then we have um, uh, provided some support to capture uh, the applied knowledge that comes back from the pilots. Uh, the support we get from the pilots are the lessons learned. This is one of the uh, big interests of, uh, of eShape, is that it's bringing all these uh, uh, terrain uh, knowledge, all these uh, lessons learned from the pilots themselves. 
Uh, it is based on real diverse uh, feedback from uh, different uh, domains and it's addressing real needs. And then it is also uh, supporting cross-domain fertilization because we share uh, this knowledge uh, regularly during uh, the developments and uh, one, um, one domain can learn from another one. For instance, here, uh, agriculture being very mature with this uh, change of uh, satellite can uh, teach uh, to the other domains. So, uh, yesterday Thierry has presented this organization of uh, the project. We have uh, worked a lot um, so far to define how to interact between the work packages, with the showcases, with the pilots. And uh, now we are ready to onboard new pilots. And uh, this is uh, what will be uh, uh, kicked off um, during this General Assembly. And uh, to work on this interface, because the platforms providers are not part of the consortium, they are partners. And uh, now we want to focus on this interface. And this was kicked off uh, yesterday with a breakout session on uh, leverage uh, the EO uh, infrastructures. So the project is now uh, ready to upscale. And uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, you are welcome to ask uh, questions. Thanks a lot, um, Marie-Françoise, for uh, this presentation. Um, so it's time to have a, a short Q&A uh, um, discussion. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm making something wrong. Uh, so you can uh, ask a question on the different, uh, um, on the diff on the live Q&A, which is uh, available uh, on your um, on your uh, on air um, windows, um, I saw that you you present all the uh, the sprint uh, elements, uh, Marie Françoise. Um, so I think it's 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 difficult to manage, but I think uh, it's also thanks to the the feedback all, of all the pilots that we are able to to go on and to really. Uh, have a, a, a good feedback and also I, I know that you have to also go in the different uh, showcase uh, session to be able to to connect with all of this. Um, from from all your experience, are you extracting uh, uh, enough information for, for the follow-up and how are you going to proceed to, to share all this information uh, uh, with uh, the different pilots and showcase? Well, yes, uh, this is the the first challenge has been to convince the pilot that uh, all the information we were asking was going to be used. When we have made the initial assessment, I think that many of them thought, well, this is a right once uh, read never, uh, because it was a lot of information. Uh, I think that uh, then it has evolved because I've seen that we were really using it and uh, uh, learning and taking a lot of it. Uh, so they have uh, really begun to interact much more and it's improving every day. Uh, so right now what I try to do is to focus on some topics through each of the pilots, but every day I discover new lessons learned we can capture. And, um, and so this is an ongoing work and I think at the end it will be uh, very rich. I hope so. Well, hopefully, yes. And also uh, that's a, a good example of, of, the, of this is uh, the work you, you present yesterday about the different platforms. That was uh, really interesting to see uh, uh, the, the the big uh, uh, amount of information you, you you capture through the sprints and through the different uh, actions coming from the different pilots and I think it's also uh, uh, good to have uh, this feedback uh, in in a, in a global view and uh, and in order to really uh, organize uh, uh, the the lesson learned. Uh, if there is any question about uh, your presentation in, in the attendees, uh, feel free to use a live Q&A. I forgot to remind that uh, uh, before uh, before the start, but uh, feel free to, to send a new, uh, new question. And uh, so if we... I, I, yeah. will, uh, I will complete that. The, the target here is um, to go from um, tens of thousands of users that uh, the platforms can have right now to millions, because this is what Earth's observation deserves. This is what 
the web um, enables. Uh, this is what the standards want to enable, to really uh, upscale to a lot of users. And, um, and to do so, we have to mature very quickly uh, this market. Uh, we have to mature to get more science, more success stories, to onboard more users, uh, end users also. And this is really what, uh, what we are targeting here through uh, cross fertilization from pioneers, from people who are more advanced to uh, people who want to step in, but who did not uh, do it, do so uh, still. Okay, that's nice. Uh, any question for the room? If not, we will uh, go to the, the follow-up, but I think uh, you, you will have more questions, but in one-to-one uh, -one, uh, exchange. And uh, feel free to contact with Marie-Françoise on, uh, on the different elements if you need. So, so it's, it's time to have a presentation from uh, uh, Emmanuel uh, about uh, the new Incoma. Uh, OK, just a comment coming from Miko about the fact that Marie-Françoise is right with the million of users of Target, but also means that uh, our web service uh, need to be improved a lot. Uh, yeah, you're right, Miko and uh, Marie-Françoise, uh, I'm sure is also in this uh, in this optic and thinking about uh, how we can really uh, go that way. Yeah, <laughs> you confirm. Okay, great. So, Emmanuel, um, you, the floor is yours. Uh, I think you're going to present uh, uh, the feedback of, uh, of our onboarding process and uh, the, up to you to Thank manage you. the follow-up of, uh, of the session. Great. Can you hear me well? Yeah, perfect. perfect. So it is, a, it is a pleasure to, uh, to start this, uh, this session and this, uh, this presentation on this uh, onboarding. Um, we will welcome today newcomers uh, in the project. So it is, uh, it is a really uh, an important um, moment for, for all of us. Um, I will uh, introduce in, uh, in this presentation the process we had to follow and uh, the, we will have uh, the pleasure to uh, welcome uh, five new um, pilots and we will have a representative who will describe uh, their uh, value proposal uh, in, this, uh, in this session. So, uh, for those who may not be familiar with ERSC, so I am uh, Emmanuel Pajot, Secretary General of uh, the European Association of Remote Sensing Companies. We are a trade association um, based in Brussels. We represent 127 members from 26 countries in Europe. So, I'm more or less sure you don't know all the icons you can see logo you can see in the right part of this uh, of this slide do not hesitate to discover one of this i'm sure uh, you can discover a lot of very interesting uh, topics and, and solutions but the topic of today is um is the onboarding why um, do we have an onboarding first point is that we really wanted from the early beginning as a project team to uh, follow uh, what are the evolution of the need? What are the potential evolution of the trend? And in order to uh, keep the consortium live, uh, we wanted to have the possibility to onboard new pilots to be introduced during the project. This is why we had defined this, uh, this onboarding process. This onboarding process uh, started uh, for this uh, call, which I just finished, um, started beginning of uh, 2020 in the first quarter. And, uh, and we defined the scope, you uh, uh, as an um, internal contributor, parsec beneficiaries, provide your views on what could be needed, uh, what could be the scope. We had additionally uh, external views, for example, from the GOI level working group uh, on this. Based on this, uh, on this uh, views requirement, we uh, had to prepare uh, a guide for applicants in order to help uh, applicants to understand what, uh, will, if, uh, what is the e-shape about, uh, what is uh, the evaluation process, and uh, to help them to fill what we call the application form. At the same time, thanks so to uh, Noah, we created a specific uh, space uh, function on the help desk in order to uh, answer the different equations they may have and to collect uh, applications. And obviously, 
we uh, communicate a lot uh, and thanks to all of your support uh, on this on these opportunities to join eShape, to join UOGO. So this uh, launch was called uh, on the 8th of June during the eShape meeting uh, to relaunch it. And the call closed uh, on the 4th of September. So uh, as soon as we uh, received uh, and closed the call, uh, we had to make an eligibility check. Uh, we defined uh, with the jury the grid of evaluations, confirmed the grid of evaluations, and we launched the, uh, the evaluation. We collected all the uh, evaluations and uh, based on these uh, evaluations, we, uh, were pos it was possible to highlight the five best marks. And this is the one uh, we share with you. Uh, and you had to vote between the 12th and the 16th of October. So this is where we are in the middle at the bottom of the top of this slide. Uh, the onboarding process is not, um, is not over, of course. Um, it will continue because we have to uh, uh, integrate all the new uh, comers in uh, the grant agreement. We have to um, confirm the, the consortium agreement and so on. And then they will have the technical implementations in order to benefit from eShape access to all the support services uh, we, uh, we can provide and we are currently developing. About the applications, um, this open call was really successful. Uh, as said yesterday by Thierry, uh, we received a total of 34 applications, which is much more higher than what we expected. So this is really um, a great sign. We see that uh, we had a lot of contributions thanks to the support of all the beneficiaries. We had a significant impact and people saw the value of, uh, of eShape. Uh, in terms of typology, uh, if we focus on, on the lead of, uh, of the applicants, we can see that um, 50, uh, 76 percent of uh, application come from the private sector. It's a really good sign. It's really high line that the private sector is really interested to to contribute um, to Geo. Then we receive uh, four application from a research institute and, and from a university. Um, these are numbers. What about the countries applications of the lead? We can see that we have a really good uh, diversity of um, the different lead of this uh, of this um, for this call with uh, no significant numbers from uh, countries such as uh, Spain, Netherlands, Italy, Germany, but also in other countries where we didn't have a um, partner before. So it will increase the diversity, increase the views of this um, of the potential uh, solutions. In terms of applications, number of applications per showcase, we uh, opened the possibility to, um, to an applicant to apply to more than one showcase, because for some thematic, it was clear that it could be a bit difficult to position themselves in exactly one showcase. So they had the possibility to select several. So at the end, we had, I would say, from these 34 applications, we have a total of 50 evaluations to be done. 50 applications which had to be reviewed by a jury. Jury was composed uh, as defined uh, and by uh, internal staff and by external one. Internal means the sustainability team, so ERSC and um, Evenflow, PMT, and showcase leaders representatives. So for each showcase, we had one review, one showcase representative was able to review all the applications which were uh, predefined. And then we have externals. Externals, we are selected uh, initially mostly from the executive board of eShape. You have here the, the list. Um, but due to the, um, the time to perform the evaluation, which was really tight, more due to the, um, the realization of this uh, online event, we had to vote before and so on. Um, for the showcase five, we needed to have an additional people. Thank you to uh, Elena Loss for her contribution. Um, in this. What did they have to uh, evaluate? After the evaluation of um, uh, eligibility made by ERSC, we defined uh, eight uh, criteria. So the compliance with uh, E-shaped KPI, the demonstration of potential willingness to upscale, the strengthen and promotion of links between geos and uh, other platforms. 
the coordinated downstream data exploitation of European asset through GEOS, career and data management through the use of GEOS data, significant advance in air science, uh, system science, modeling and downstream product development, capacity building among uh, current and potential users, and minimal technology readiness level of seven, and clarity of plan to improve the eight to nine. This, is, this last point was really um, in order to uh, increase the potential uh, output uh, during the project to helping companies or other entities really uh, to really deliver services to user or, or, or custom. So all these criteria add the same weight. Uh, each uh, jury evaluators had to uh, provide a score from zero to five for each of these eight criteria. And with the same way, we define the mean of evaluation. And thanks to this, we uh, have proposed uh, this, uh, this pilot to you. Uh, 42 um, votes uh, were received on the potential of 55, 55 partners. Uh, the quorum is supposed to be a 66 uh, by definition in the consortium agreement, and we reached 78% of vote. So this uh, quorum is reached. In terms of result of, of the vote, we had a 36 yes. So it means 84% uh, of positive uh, or agreement for the proposed um, pilot. Um, based on the consortium again, we need to have a minimum of 66%. So uh, these um, five pilots are by default approved by uh, the each engineer I see. Thank you very much to all. Then uh, I will uh, introduce and we will have the possibility to uh, have uh, the voice of, uh, um, for example, the first one, pilot one, uh, lead recognition uh, GmbH uh, here in this in this session. So. Um, is it possible to invite? Yes, you are. Hello, good morning, Emmanuel. This is Gunther speaking from Risk Cognition. Welcome, Gunther. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank so you. you provide us with a, with a slide. Uh, I invite you to, to introduce you to, and I will uh, change the slides when you, when you need. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we are very excited, very honored being selected. Our pilot uh, with the title uh, Linking EO and Farm IoT for Automated Decision Support. Um, yeah, we are not doing that alone as risk cognition, but together with um, a Slovenian company called Elmibit. They are the developers of eVineyard, which is um, yeah, a vineyard management system. Um, we think that uh, eShape is an exciting and Im important activity for yeah, the further sustainable exploitation of European Earth observation resources. Um, my partner in the company and co-founder, Konrad Bielski, and I, we work in the Earth observation ecosystem for, for many years. And, and we think that now with Copernicus, with cloud computing, with AI, but also with all the knowledge that was created over the last decades, you can say it's it's, these are the right ingredients um, yeah, to, to further boost the EO exploitation, um, especially from, an, from a commercial perspective. So what do we have in mind uh, with our pilot? We want to provide farmers and, and growers with actionable and timely information to improve productivity and sustainability. And um, yeah, with the link to Vineyard, we want to do that. Uh, we want to focus on vineyard management or we want to start with vineyard management and our focus is on the integration of water management and plant monitoring services we want to make use of sentinel one two and three and we want to feed the derived information through api services into eVineyard's um, software environment and um, yeah using api we believe that state of the art it's time yeah, to go away from this traditional EO exploitation of, of producing maps into providing data, having data as a service, following that um, motto. And um, yeah, of course, we want. To, why, why did we apply to eShape? We want to make use of the services that you work on, that you develop, that we want to contribute also 
with our own knowledge and um, especially from a business perspective, the business booster activities, getting maybe support uh, yeah, in, in, when it comes to IP protection, but also about market information and policy updates um, that we are um, they are up to date. Then also learning about co-design methods, doing that, yeah, we implement or want to implement um, our services, of course, in close collaboration with eVineyard, but we also want to learn from you, from the um, existing consortium about your experiences, how to improve such a co-design process. And then of course, all the promotion possibilities using the EO mall, maybe to uh, promote our services on the global level. I think that is a big chance and therefore we are very grateful and we are looking forward to closely co collaborate with you um, over the next the near future. Thanks. Thank you very much. So the second selected pilot is led by the Space Research Institute NASU SO Ukraine and we have with us uh, Natalia Kusu. Yes, yes, uh, I'm here. Um. Uh, can I share my screen? To... I, I will share. It will be easier to avoid any technical issue if you if you. Mm -hmm. I display mm -hmm. currently the the slide you sent us. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see. I could do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I'm Natalia Kusul from Space Research Institute, Ukraine, and we are uh, very happy and uh, honored to be selected among the pilots because uh, it is very important for us. Our pilot uh, uh, mainly belong to agricultural uh, um, domain, uh, and uh, it is also cross-domain um, project, because main goal of our project is to assess sustainable development goals indicators, indicators that are based on um, assessment of land productivity. Namely, uh, we have developed uh, the methodology of calculation um, indicator, SDG, SDG indicator two for one, and we implemented uh, in SDG indicator 1531 in Ukraine and have developed the methodology for the second one uh, and published it uh, in a, a peer review journal. It was developed uh, in the geoessential project of Era Planet and tested in small territory of Ukraine in one region. And uh, we hope that this pilot will allow us to extend uh, this methodology for the entire country and for other neighboring countries. Um, Ukraine is not... Uh, uh, Ukraine doesn't belong to European Union, but uh, we uh, are associated country and we um, um, try to implement the best practices of uh, European Union in our country. And one of them is uh, common agricultural policy. Uh, we do uh, a lot of efforts to um, implement uh, elements of this uh, policy in Ukraine, and I hope that this project, uh, in cooperation with CRIODIAS uh, and other partners of eShape, uh, allow us to do this in the best way and allow us to uh, commercialize this result also, because uh, we see the potential of commercialization. In Ukraine, um, we are uh, in the beginning of uh, land market, and I hope that, oh, sorry. Um, uh, and uh, I hope that uh, this um, project will allow us to, um, uh, to commercialize the result for land evaluation in Ukraine. So we are happy uh, to be on board, to be um, with uh, eShape. And uh, it is 
uh, great opportunities for us. Thank you very much. So, I will continue with the third pilot is led by Water Insight. And uh, we have uh, Marnix Lenin with us today. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Ah, good. Um, yes, so I'm uh, Marnix Lane from Water Insight. Um, and uh, we are very happy, very honored uh, to be selected uh, to, to join the E-Shape. Um, a bit about Water Insight, what we do. Um, we focus on water remote sensing um, using satellite data, uh, providing satellite services, uh, but also instruments. Uh, so we have optical instruments for close sensing developed either for uh, satellite validation or a standalone water quality uh, measurement instrument. Um, E-Shape, um, our um, application for E-Shape centers around our uh, products for uh, water uh, quality managers. Uh, specifically, what we have developed around the Water Framework Directive um, uh, reporting. So uh, in our E-Shape objectives, uh, we are looking to provide Water Framework Directive uh, ecological status products, uh, usually uh, phytoplankton biomass uh, based on chlorophyll A. Um, we already have a service for that, but within E-Shape, we want to uh, um, uh, expand or, or improve that service from TRL 7 uh being a a tested and tried method uh to take that further um uh, into a full-fledged uh, uh, uh commercial service um so i in uh, bold in the brackets uh i put in here uh, what we try to achieve uh, within eShape um rolling out this uh service uh, to a large scale service, uh, as pointed out in, in the previous session, um, uh, with the potential of a pan European coverage, uh, keeping into account the local water types uh, and, and other uh, water framework directive uh, uh, national differences. Uh, we want to do this uh, with a number of demos. Uh, and another point here is uh, our integration into the BIOSIS. Uh, we already did technical tests uh, to make sure that our service is fully compliant and can run within a dais. Uh, and now we want to see, um, uh, we want to build up uh, our momentum uh, to make sure that it is uh, uh, economically uh, viable to run that in dais. Um, we want to generate recognition uh, and support for the Earth Observation products. Uh, in the scope of the Water Framework Directive uh, at a political administrative and management level, because there we see uh, is a lot of work to do, um, as Earth observation is not a, uh, how do you say, is not a, a way of, of uh, in, uh, getting input data uh, that is now used uh, within the nations uh, for their Water Framework Directive. Uh, so there's also uh, uh, some some awareness uh, to be uh, uh, created there, um, and we also like to push towards the recommendations as we have formulated in a white paper called Satellite Assistant Monitoring of Water Quality Support, support the implementation of the Water Framework Directive, um, and this is really where we. Uh, see the benefit of E-Shape uh, to, to uh, uh, create the awareness uh, to, to actually influence the policy uh, of water managers within Europe um, to accept and start using uh, Earth observation data on a larger scale. Um, that's my story. Great. Thank you very much. And we'll
will come again. So now I propose to uh, inform at all. Let's force pilot is uh, led by um, Planet Tech, and we have today with us uh, Daniela Drimaco. Yes. Uh, hello, Emmanuel. Uh, can I share my screen, Emmanuel? I you can. Uh, you can do for me. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So, um, yes, my name is uh, Daniela Drivaco and I work for uh, Planet Tech Italia. Um, I'm going to show you one of uh, the five uh, new pilots that is uh, focused on the topic of aquaculture. Uh, so please, uh, the next slide, please. So basically, um, aquaculture farmers' uh, uh, issues are related to the impact uh, of the extreme event due to, to climate change, um, leading to the change of the sea water temperature, phytoplankton concentration that affect, uh, um, of course, also the, um, the growth rates of shellfish, the mortality of shellfish, and so the productivities and the quality of product of the same uh, uh, fruits. Uh, as a consequence, the um, producer uh, cannot make use of the standard practice related to the seeding and soaking that they have always used it in the past. Um, what we can say is that experience is, uh, their experience is not longer enough. They need uh, of uh, um, new instrument to optimize their activities, uh, to maximize the profitabilities, uh, to minimize also their risk. Consider that in the past years, uh, in the Adriatic plants, uh, there have been cases of loss up to the 80, 80% of the total production. So uh, starting from these needs, uh, we have decided to implement a customized uh, um, service. Next slide, please. <laughs> This uh, customized service is uh, Reticus Aquaculture. Currently, uh, the service that we uh, provide is at TRL7. And uh, by making use of uh, CMAMS data together with the Sentinel-3 data uh, and uh, together with the um, uh, forecast uh, uh, growth modeling, we provide once a week to the um, aquaculture farmers information for each plants that they have related to the muscle total weight, uh, weekly muscle growth rate starting from their, their seeding date and soaking dates. We provide indicators related to the seven day forecast of muscle growth and also a comparative analysis of growth rates with the previous growth season. Uh, so, um, by making uh, use again of uh, uh, satellite data that provide us uh, information related to the sea surface temperature together with the chlorophyll percenta percentage. Uh, next slide, Emmanuel, please. Um, and uh, by integrating this data together with the um, forecast growth models, we give an information, a precise information to the aqua farmers uh, about the right moment for the harvesting and selling their products in order to increase their productivities and improve also their profitability, basically. Um, but how does uh, this, uh, this system currently work? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, the, an overview, a very fast overview of uh, how Reticus currently works. Uh, as uh, already uh, said by Emmanuel, uh, the, the team that will work in this new pilot is composed by Planetech together with the Blue Farm, that is a spin-off of the University of Venice in Italy. And uh, uh, we will provide all the information about the satellite data. Blue Farm will provide information related to the muscle growth models. And uh, Reticus, the, currently the system is able to ingest data coming from different multi-source uh, satellite data to process it, uh, this kind of data and uh, these the models uh, in a uh, cloud-based infrastructure and to process it in an automatic processing way. And it is able to extract 
what we call actionable information that are geoanalytics that can help the, uh, the, um, the aqua farmers to take the right decision at the right moment. Next slide, please. So what we are going to do in this, uh, the, the step forward uh, respect to the current service that we have, as I already said, uh, the current service is, it as, uh, is uh, at TRL 7. Uh, our objective is to reach TRL 9 and is to um, develop a, a powerful vertical solution for aquaculture professionals who do not have any kind of experience in health observation data or spatial data infrastructure. We aim to uh, co-design the new uh, Reticus service, uh, aquaculture service, together with the users, that is the Mediterranean Aquaculture Association, uh, the, one, uh, the, the most important association of aquaculture in Italy. So by making use of the design thinking approach, we um, are confident to develop a um, customized service that uh, will ensure also a target price in line with the spending capacity of the uh, users. So um, we, uh, we guess to uh, develop a service that will be sustainable uh, as well. Uh, we will integrate also information uh, uh, data sorry, uh, of marine weather condition and forecast in order to improve the, the precision of the service uh, to provide notification of critical condition shellfish well-being. We will also develop a mobile app because this is explicitly been uh, requested by the, the users, the current users that make use of uh, uh, Reticus Aquaculture. And considering that the, uh, the most of uh, um, mussels plants are located close to the shoreline and considering that currently we do not have satellite data uh, near the uh, close to the coast we will uh, uh, integrate the sentinel 2 data together with the sentinel 3 in order to increase uh, um, improve the, the precision of the uh, indicator that we will provide to the final user then we will also develop uh, we will also develop two different pilot case uh, in um, Puglia or in Friuli or in Veneto according to the um, user needs and uh, the user desire and uh, we will also develop uh, we will also provide sorry two different uh, capacity building exercises uh, during the project uh, next uh, slide please uh, finally, um, how we will benefit from uh, E-Shape. Uh, currently, uh, Reticus Aquaculture is focalized on uh, the uh, Mediterranean Sea Italian market, but we aim to uh, scale up uh, our service uh, uh, to reach the whole European market. So um, we expect uh, uh, E-Shape to support our needs in terms of uh, access to knowledge, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, user requirements, uh, policy priorities, for example, or market and related uh, market trend related to a particular country and so on. Uh, we provide a sort of access, a support to uh, access to the markets by leveraging uh, on uh, e-shape visibility and by supporting us also in the user uptake. And why not, we uh, can also uh, find and make uh, synergies with either uh, other uh, pilots in the water showcase, uh, such as 5.5 uh, uh, focused on the uh, monitoring fishing activities or 5.1 uh, related to the uh, seawater uh, quality parameter. So that's all uh, from, uh, from my side. Thank you very the next much, slide, uh, where is uh, you can see, find our uh, our contact. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. And the, the last pilot, which uh, will be uh, onboarded uh, for this um, call for EOBS project 2020, is uh, led by DHI, and we have Torsten Bondo with us today. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Um, thank you very much for accepting our pilot. M my name is Torsten Bondo and I work uh, at DHI Grass with uh, business development and I've worked in the remote sensing business for, for many years. Um, this is a, a pilot in the energy domain and we are, um, have submitted this with DGU Wind who is uh, also an e-shape partner. Um, 
The reason why we have submitted this is we have um, just completed a three-year um, research grant by the Danish Innovation Fund on developing new surface layers for the wind industry. And these surface layers we have sort of bundled into a data package that is based on Copernicus data that we call uh, WindSight. Um, our challenge is now getting this uh, data package that has been developed together with the industry, together with the uh, wind partners, out to the market and and uh, and get this uh, sold to to uh, a larger group of people, uh, especially in the wind community. So so the challenge is that we have uh, an already existing product, but we need to commercialize this, and this is what we see eShape can maybe help us with. So we are very curious on on this, and very happy that we have been accepted for this. So the wind side data packages, these uh, surface layers that we have developed in the um, in 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 this grant that I was telling you about uh, has has been targeted towards wind farm developers, but also towards investors, turbine manufacturers, and consultants working in the wind industry domain. So we uh, in this e shape pilot we will uh, select a number of these uh, representative companies from this industry and uh, plan to uh, work with these uh, companies and and do co-creation cycles with these end, end users to better understand uh, how can we uh, commercialize and sell these uh, EO products to these end users. So the end uh, aim of this um, uh, pilot is to develop a sustainable business case for us for this wind side package, package and, and make eShape in this, in this way sort of a a booster of this uh, already existing uh, product. So they will be presented by the data that, that we have been developed and the derived products that we have developed through a series of uh, workshops and, and, and webinars that are, are, are uh, funded by this uh, pilot. And they will learn how to work and use these uh, data. Um, so um, what do we expect from eShape here? We expect them um, to, um, to investigate how to use the portal, how to work with this mall. And, um, and then uh, we expect uh, the focus of eShape to, to be targeted towards the market uh, and, um, and helping us to reach a larger market and audience um, with the access to um, eShape. Um, so one of the sort of uh, key performance indicators we will be looking at is uh, what is it is the total number of end users that that are, are going to be taking part in this service developments and who is attending these uh, workshops and webinars. So we'll be be monitoring this to see how we actually perform on this pilot here, and then uh, what at the end what is the number of data deliveries for these uh, wind clients, the wind farm developers, the investors, and the turbine manufacturers, and then in the end it's 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 easy for us to to then see what does that lead to in terms of total revenue. So we look forward to, to do this pilot together with D2U Wind, who was also part of this, um, uh, this project here. And uh, we look forward to engage with all of you and, and the knowledge you have on existing market and access to clients. So that's it for, for me right now. Thank you very much, Dawson. So this is um, the end of the five presentation of the, uh, the five new uh, selected and agreed uh, pilot. Um, this is not completely the end. As I said before, a um, new pilot will not have to be integrated into the ESHA consortium as a beneficiary, so an amendment to the, the grant agreement with the um, And they will have then access to uh, all the support uh, activity we, we are providing to, uh, to pilots. Um, this is the end of one cycle, but it is uh, we are close to the beginning of a new one. Um, we uh, will have to prepare soon uh, ourselves for the new call, call for your best product 2021, which will be uh, launched uh, uh, in June uh, next year. So uh, we really want to first say thank you to all of uh, the current uh, eShape um, partners, because uh, this 
call has been a real success uh, thanks to uh, the involvement of all of you. You have um, disseminated this information very well. Um, and uh, this is the reason why we, we are so proud of it. Uh, just to give you one, uh, one uh, inside information about the applications, it's easy to say 34, but um, just um, two days before the, uh, the deadline, we received only three applications. Um, at 38 hours before, six. 24 hours, six again. On the last day, the last 24 hours, 19 applications. So it's a bit stressful as well, but um, it has been, uh, it is quite classic in this kind of approach, but it is, um, it is very interesting as well to see how it moves. So if you have some interest already, identify some potential needs, uh, we need, uh, we will have to um, we will launch a survey again in order to understand this and to define what will be the scope of the new uh, call next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emmanuel, uh, and welcome to uh, to the new partners uh, that will be that will uh, still have to be included in uh, in the eShape consortium. Uh, the road is not fully uh, achieved, and there is a bit of uh, administrative behind that. Um, um, I, first of all, I, I would like to uh, to give back the message coming from uh, Ervin Gore that said congratulations to all the new uh, partners involved on, in this uh, five pilot. Uh, it's nicely complementing what we already have, and uh, and uh, the uh, there is a set of uh, uh, diverse plan activity that will be uh, uh, within eShape and of interest for all the new uh, uh, comers. Um, Additionally, uh, there, there is a need, and uh, Erwin is also uh, going back to, to this uh, on, his, on his message. Uh, um, uh, we had, of course, five uh, um, selected uh, pilot, but uh, the, the other one were not um, were, were also good, and that's that's uh, the key question uh, we have now, and that's very interesting that we have so much interest in the in the job we we propose and on the uh, process we have uh, uh, we have experiment uh, uh, through this onboarding process, and and we we really are uh, looking on the way we can um, link them with uh, Eurojo and try to interact more deeply uh, with them in order to. Uh, to not uh, uh, lo lose this momentum and to try really to to include them in, in a way or another in the in our uh, uh, behavior and uh, and uh, on in our um, in our uh, um, in in our ex uh, in our work really to to have them with us. It, it's really uh, uh, difficult to to say to uh, all these uh, uh, these attendees uh, and all these uh, proposer. Uh, we are sorry we cannot include uh, you. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, the results were were very very uh, narrow altogether. But at the end of the day, we we try to have uh, something that allow um, in the in the near future to have also a, a kind of onboarding of the of the proposal of the other proposal. Uh, within Eurogeo, and that will be a discussion we will uh, carry it out with uh, with uh, with Jean Dussard uh, soonly, I hope. So that was really an impressive process, uh, and uh, Emmanuel stressed the fact that we were uh, uh, really uh, um, waiting uh, stressfully the, the feedback, and uh, and we were checking uh, uh, every day the progress, and that's that's clear that uh, if the five minutes. Uh, the, the five last minutes are not existing, there will be nothing. So hopefully there is this five last minute. So that's, that's great. And uh, thanks a lot for the process. We will, of course, try to improve it again uh, to be, uh, to be uh, really on the best possible way of, of uh, managing the next call. Uh, it will come soon uh, on, our, on, on, on our desk to, to continue on that. Um, I should ask to the, the attendees if there is any question. If you have uh, some, please uh, do not hesitate to, to to go to the live Q and A. Uh, we had a, um, a reaction from uh, Jeff Sawyer, uh, which is really pleased to see the new pilot and that congratulates uh, all of you. 
Uh, and that's great to see the dynamic process we envisage uh, come to reality. So that that's for sure something we, we imagine uh, during the preparation of the of uh, eShape on the proposal itself. And it's nice to see that uh, uh, we we had this uh, uh, this uh, idea now which is existing. And so we will uh, be uh, careful on including the new partners and uh, and uh, help them to to engage with all the activity we have uh, uh, behind us and in front of us of course we have a second sprint that will be prepared soon and so hopefully they will uh, they will join a uh, community which is uh, active um, currently uh, we have um, also a series of showcase uh, presentation uh, tomorrow and of course all of you are welcome uh, to participate to the session and uh, I think some of you will be uh, directly contacted by the showcase coordinator in order to uh, to be included in in the discussion and uh, and to to discuss how you can work uh, all together. So um, if there is uh, no additional uh, um, elements or question coming from the the Q and A. Any question on the process? Any question for Marie-Françoise on the first presentation? Uh, I um, don't see any, any new feedback. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Evangelos, uh, you agree. Uh, the Eurojo action group should probably be the mean uh, for non-selected uh, pilot to remain engaged. And we will work with, with you on that. And uh, you have also welcome from uh, Nicola uh, Fischer, which is part of the PMT. And we will for sure uh, interact with, uh, with uh, the PMT, which is uh, the team working on the management of the project with uh, Lionel Ménard, uh, Mathieu Reboul, uh, and uh, Nicola Fischer and myself. And so if, uh, if we don't have uh, any more comment or question, uh, I uh, suggest that uh, we open uh, we, we take a short break and we open uh, for uh, in advance uh, the live session that will allow if, uh, if uh, some of the, the presenter of the live session uh, want to do uh, twice their presentation or to have more uh, discussion to, to have a bit more time. And, uh, and then we will uh, reconvene for the plenary session uh, at uh, 11. Thanks a lot for, for your participation. Thanks a lot to all the presenter and hopefully see you uh, uh, in the live session and, uh, and soon in, uh, in the, the next plenary session. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thierry, bye-bye.